we are starting a unit on quadratic. Okay, now this is an important announcement. New nine weeks, new you. Okay, some of us have gotten comfortable, but we should be uh, more disciplined. Okay, when you come in on time and the lights are working, that's when we should be out. Saying this literally, imagine having to say that every day of your life. That's my job. And I'll do my job happily. Y'all can help me by just doing what you know already. It's not that you don't have the knowledge. You already know. Okay? So please be on time. Do what you need to do. You don't need me to tell you every day to do your warm up and write the objective. But some of us, I'm seeing, we need reminders. So today, please do that. Okay? Now, let's do this warm up together. We're talking about quadratic functions. Okay? We did do a warm up a couple weeks back. Uh, where we graphed x squared, okay? Now, today we're comparing x squared with 2x squared with 1 half x squared. Let's do that. Let me uh, pull it up. If you go to a new document and you don't save, I'd like for you to graph it, okay? So, new document, don't save, let's keep that out of graph. So we can graph this and see the difference between x squared By the way, if I give you a quiz, do the quiz first, just saying. Okay. Now, let's graph x squared. I'm going to type x squared into. So this blue one is my OG, my original x squared. It's actually called the parent function. Not really the parent, the original. Now let's graph 2x squared. What button do I press to get a new graph? Okay, tab. And now I'm going to type 2x squared. Now, 2 seems like a bigger number than x squared. Do you think it's going to make it wider or narrower? What do you all think? Okay, now you would think, listen, you would think 2 would make it wider, you think bigger, okay? But what it does is it makes it stretch upward. So it actually makes it look skinnier, narrower. That's another way of saying it, okay? So when I type 2x squared, it's this red one, and it is narrow. So everything is multiplied by 2 going up, so it kind of stretches it like this. Okay. Now, let's try 1 half x squared. I'm going to hit tab again. I'm going to type 1, oops, wrong one, one to the right, 2 to the right, x squared. Okay. Now you see this black one? This one is wider than the original blue one. Okay? So one half does this. Vertically it compresses it, which makes it go out horizontally. Okay? Horizontally, right? So it gets wider horizontally, smashes it vertically, so to speak. Okay? So again, the blue is the original, the red one is narrower with a vertical stretch. The black one is wider with a vertical compression. Those are the words we're going to use for that. Everyone finishing the quiz? Okay, can you do the notes again? Okay, so you do have these notes on your desk. You should. By the way, you should have it. Again, this is in your own words. In your own words, I want you to explain the difference between those three. Okay? Is x squared narrower or wider? Or is 2x squared narrower or wider? You write it out. Is 1 half x squared narrower or wider? You need to write it out. So if you if you only wrote down what I wrote down, you have not done the warm-up. Because everyone wrote the same notes. It was simple. Comparing these three graphs. Yes. Oh. So let me say it again. 2x squared is vertically stretched skinnier. 1 half x squared is vertically compressed and wider. 2x okay? squared skinnier or narrower, I should say. 1 half x squared. Okay, so everyone has their own warm up sentence that you wrote on your own. You have to write your own sentence, so get that down. Yeah. 2x squared is narrow. Bigger number, stretches it up, makes it narrow. That's what I'm saying. 2x squared stretches it up, makes it narrow. Narrow or skinnier, okay. but one half compresses it, makes it wider. Okay. Has everyone written their own sentence for that. Now, 
And don't you grab on the way in. We're going to be together. We're going to talk about that. Okay, so everyone did their own thing for the warm up. Now we're looking at these notes. Okay, quadratic two features. So, everyone looking up here. Headphones up. Okay, we'll check our tools. This says quadratics. So the function of what we're doing is called quadratic function. Okay. Quadratic function gives you this shape. Now the name of this shape is not quadratic. The name of the shape, everybody go ahead and write this down. This is called a parabola. P A R A B O So the shape is called a parabola, and the function is quadratic. So quadratic functions give you a parabola shape. That's how it works, okay? Now, this turning point, you, you never want to see the bottom. It's going down, 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 and then it turns and goes up, up, up. That turning point at the very bottom is called a verge point. Well, that's that down. E-R-G-E-S. Verge point. Anytime you have a corner or any direction in the map, you see a verge point. So at the bottom here, next to this comes the main point, and the vertex is what? Three, negative one, perfect, okay? So it's an actual ordered pair, so the vertex is three, negative one, okay. Now, second thing is, the point, this point also represents the blank slash blank value, so it's either the maximum or the minimum value, write that down. Maximum minimum. You can abbreviate, but now I'm writing that down. Maximum minimum. Depending on whether the parabola opens upwards or downwards. If it opens upwards, meaning it goes like this forever, that means it has a minimum at the bottom. If it goes downwards, like this, okay. And looks like a hill, then it has a maximum. Okay, so a minimum is at the bottom of our ID, maximum is at the top of the main point. Think of it that way. So in this picture, this vertex is a min or a max. What do you think? Minimum. What's the reason? Because it's at the bottom of a U shape. Okay, now my people that are getting quizzes to finish, you got finished? Who knows the other two? The back to finish. Okay, now, second part. Same graph, but we're talking about every parabola has a blank. Which should be located where the line intersects the Y. What do you call it when it intersects the Y? I'm sorry, intersect. Y intercepts. Now, on the picture, it's over here where it crosses this Y axis. So this is the Y intercept. Okay. Another way to tell is when X is zero, what is Y? Exactly. So when X is zero, what is Perfect. Okay, so next part, the y coordinate of this point is this point, is the p in this standard form. So you're going to see equations that are y equals some number x squared plus some number x plus some number. We call it ax squared plus bx plus c. This p, this last number, is always the y intercept. That 
Tyler Ward. Now he's going to flip that over. What we learned about Vertex maxing in, Y intercepts, and now we're going to the back. All right, so a parabola can have zero, one, or two, and we call them X intercepts, which can be found where it crosses the X axis, right? So how many how many X intercepts do we see in this picture? What? Two. There's two of them, right? So what are the values of the X intercepts? Okay, two comma zero, four comma zero. Very good. It says you can find the x coordinates by plugging a quadratic sequence from zero and solving for x. Another one would be y is zero. What is x? That's another way to tell the x intercept. Now, I'm about to get a little extra with y'all because it's so important. Everyone, put a box around these four words, okay? Everybody, everyone that was there, did you feel like you didn't have your spot because you had a sweater or tight? What do you mean? No, you have a sweater. So, check it out. There, these four names mean the exact same thing. So, look right here. An X intercept is the same thing as a root, which is the same thing as a solution, which is the same thing as a zero. Now, in algebra one, you should have learned that, maybe, but here's the deal. I don't know why there's four names for one, one thing. Why is that? Couldn't tell you. But I'm supposed to prepare you that whenever you see any of these things, they mean x intercepts. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little, little exercise. Feel fresh on okay? Really? Yes. So here we go. I'll start over here. What's another name for an x intercept? A root. What's another name for a root? What's another name for a solution? What's another name for a zero? An x intercept. What's another name for an x intercept? Pick any name <laughs> off this list. I wish I could make this easier, but I can't. What's another name for an x-intercept? A root. Very good. Very smart. What's another name for a root? A solution. What's another name for a solution? Zero. What's another name for a zero? What's another name for a solution? What's another name for a root? Yes. It's overkill on purpose. Thank you so much. What's another name for zero? X-intercept. What's another name for x-intercept? What's another name for root? What's another name for solution? Hold on. Zero. What's another name for zero? Hold on. Which one? X, not Y. What's another name for an X intercept? Roots. What's another name for roots? Are you sure? Yes, it is. What's another name for solution? Zero. What's another name for zero? What's another name for zero? No. Another name. Roots. What's another name for roots in the back? Okay, now. That was annoying, and why did I forget to do that? But here's the deal. Will you forget that these four words mean the same thing? That's the question. Okay? Please don't forget. Because I only do annoying things to get it stuck in your head. Hopefully. Okay? Like, you know. No, I'm okay. annoying. Cool. What did you have to say first? Because oh, it's called annoying by this one, so you know. Okay, uh, we're almost done with the notes. Can you hold it? Because I have one last thing. Please hold, everybody. Please, if you can. Thank you. Now, let's do this. Hey, over there. Pay attention. You don't need to look for that. This is more important. Nope. Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Can I have everyone ready? We're almost done, so we can finish. Okay. A blank. Go ahead and write axis of symmetry. Axis, A X I S of symmetry. S Y M M E T R Y. Axis of symmetry. Or sometimes they say line of symmetry. That's another way to say it. Is a vertical line that goes through the vertex and then touch the parabola into two symmetrical halves. Okay? So literally you fold it down the middle. You could fold it and it would be the same on both sides. That's what symmetry means, right? Did everyone catch that? Right here. 
Okay, so remember vertical lines are always x equals a number. Okay, that's how you write a vertical line equation. So check it out. This vertical line goes to what x value right here? Uh, no zeros over here. Okay, we're talking about this right here. Three. Three. So what I write is x equals three. Does everyone see that right there? That's the equation of the line of symmetry. Does everyone write this down? So here's the deal. You can find the equation of this line by writing x equals, and the formula is negative b over 2a. If you have this formula, ax squared plus bx plus c is negative b divided by c times a to give you that x value. Now here's, the, here's an easier way to do it, though. What is the, it says right here, the x coordinate of the vertex. So what is this vertex right here? Look at it. At the very bottom, what's the vertex? Four. Four. Not four. Hold on. Three. Three comma what? Three comma one. Negative one. Okay. Sorry. I said vertex. Right here. Right. Three negative one. Now, if that's the vertex, all you have to write is x equals, and then you write the x value of the vertex, which is three. Does everyone see that? You take the x value of the vertex and you put x equals that number. X equals three. On your assignment to do this it says line of symmetry, you cannot just put three. You cannot just put three negative one. That doesn't make sense. It has to be x equals a number. So x value of the vertex. Okay. It is of no surprise that you have assignments. I don't know why you say that. You can, pretend, you can pretend to be surprised all you want. Okay, now, here's all the notes. And I'm going to pass that out now. And yes, you have something to work on. Almost day in school. All right, here we go.